Hey guys, um, I am going to be doing a flip through of the Good and the Beautiful level Math K. I don't do flip throughs, you guys. I never have. Um, I do reviews. I like to do the reviews after I've used it. However, just by flipping through this book, it lives up to everything The Good and the Beautiful does. They always put out quality, amazing, fabulous curriculum. This is no different. Um, if you guys have used their language arts and you are just uh, like speechless like I am of how, how amazing it is and how thorough and how well it's done, um, this is the same. This is the same. So it deserves a flip through on YouTube. I couldn't find one and a lot of you guys requested it. So I, I actually got this math level, not just planning to use it over the summer because my kindergartner is actually moving on to first grade. Um, this last year we used a Becca math and we used a Matthew C and I was just feeling that he did not have, we did not end the year with a good number sense. I just, something wasn't meshing with math. It just wasn't coming together. Um, we both weren't that excited about it. Um, and it, it just, we just hadn't found our sweet spot with math. And um, so I was just, I got this to use as like a summer math program. That was my first in intention, but when I got this and I opened it up and I flipped through it and I was looking at it, I really felt to take the time to thoroughly do it, even if he knows the stuff, just review, to enjoy it, to create a love for math and a strong foundation using this. So I am going to be using this not only in the summer, but however long it takes us. and. If we finish in December, a lot of you guys are asking, what am I planning to do after? Because The Good and the Beautiful is releasing their first grade math next summer, to my disappointment. <laughs> um, I honestly, I'm just following the spirit. I felt, I really felt le feel led to use this right now. So I will cross that bridge when it comes, if we finish this in December, I'm sure the Lord will lead me to what I need to do next, or we could be doing this for an entire year and just be following the good and the beautiful math track from now on. So uh, let's just dive in and I can kind of talk as I'm showing you the books. Okay, so here we go. As you can see, I got so excited about it. I even started putting it in his math pouch. So I already assembled his math book with the stuff that he needs for each lesson in there. So in the mail, um, you first get the level K math activity box. Um, a lot of people may be asking, do I have to get this? Well, I'm sure you can gather all this stuff separately. You know, I'm sure you could. Um, but if you're me and you're busy and you just want it kind of done and, and set up, get the activity box. If you are the kind of person that loves to go around and gather and make your own box, then make your own box. I honestly am not sure if, I think a lot of these things do come on the PDF, if you get the PDF, um, but you're probably not gonna get this cool paper, this good paper, see? It's just hard card stock. It's really pretty printed. Um, so that's why I love getting everything pre-printed from the good and the beautiful because it just comes really high quality here's all these see the paper and the colors they're just so beautiful and durable especially with a little one or maybe I should just say especially with my little one <laughs> drew that loves to destroy things yeah I need things kind of hardcore all right so I'm just kind of flipping through the stuff you can see, the little shapes, just really fast. If you don't want to see it, fast forward through this. <laughs> um, but everything is just very, very well done. What I love are these little things, you guys. 
Um, there's a little pouch and there's these adorable manipulatives and these go along with little stories and and math problem box. I'm just flipping through this. Here's little blocks and shapes. These are cubes and they're, they're they feel like they're wood. Again, I only have one hand. They're pretty durable. See? I can even throw them down. <laughs> pretty durable. Um, okay, so you kind of get an idea of the activity box. Let's go down here. Show you right here. Okay, so whole part, whole. So you see that? Teaching this. Handwriting card. And Drew already knows how to write his numbers. He already knows how to count from zero to 100. But he does not, again, it, he's not so super solid. If I, so we're moving on to the workbooks. You get part one and part two. And yes, I will go over both parts because originally I was thinking, well, Drew already knows his basic stuff. We'll just skip to part two. But after looking... <laughs> You guys, there's no way you can skip part one. It's so perfect. So let's go through part one. And that's my daughter in the background. Okay, so I'm gonna go through this and you can fast forward if you want to. But let's just go through the introduction. So number sense, okay. Go down here. I just wanna show you everything they cover. Um, Okay, and then section two. I love how they have practice and reviews. And then you go down here. Do you see all that? Okay, so that's basically part one. Now I wanted to show you, all right, this is when I was hooked. When I flipped to this page and I see this adorable story. It says lesson two will direct you to read this page. So let's show you how a lesson works. This is just, um, this is kind of like in level K where it kind of just gets you started. So we did that, um, kind of set things up. All right, so here's lesson two. So numbers one through five. What I love about this is that every day they take out their calendar. Okay, they have this adorable little calendar. I tried to do my own calendar in our school room. It just didn't take to him. I don't know why it didn't, it didn't catch on. He, he didn't respond to the calendar that I had in the school room on the wall. This one is more personal where he will write the date, he'll write the month out. And then um, with each day you check off the date so he can get a sense of where it is in the week. They love that. Um, and then there's a song that they sing and I did my own song all year. <laughs> so make up your own or listen to this beautifully beautiful song, much better than I sing. And then you write the date out. I love that. I love how every time they're getting those things. Um, and then you take out your place value chart. And this is another thing that Drew did not grasp. Um, he just wasn't getting a grasp on place chart. And honestly, maybe I probably just, I, I felt paralyzed in how to teach him. Um, this does a really good job and it's super small. I'm planning it again to put it in his little zippy thing for math. Oh, look right here. You're going to have the child color in the box. So you're gonna color in two and then write the number two in its place. So you're gonna write two and color in two. And these are paper, okay? They are paper, um, so he can color on that. I'm guessing if you wanted to reuse them, you could probably laminate them and he could use a dry eraser on that. So you could reuse those, they could be reusable. Um, so that's the place chart. Then you come over here, um, there are flashcards, okay? The shape flashcards. So this is what I love, is it goes through the daily dose every single day. And as a mother, with teaching other children, without this in front of me, without everything ready to go in his little zippy, 
I missed it, you guys. I missed doing these things because the other curriculum didn't have those things that takes you through it. So as a mother that has other kids, older children I have to teach, this, again, is a complete lifesaver, fills in the gaps. It takes care of that section quickly. I love this, how you start the lesson with the story. Um, and let's flip back to the story. Here we go. So you read a story. It's about a hive. I mean, how darling is that? It makes math come alive. And then um, ordinal practice is you're going to get the bees out. I mean, talk about cute. Um, and then you're going to line the bees in a straight line from left to right. And you're going to read the poem to the child. Okay, so here we are. We have our little bee manipulatives. Um, so this is something that I would do, and I just love this. You read the poem, so you go, Five little bees in a hive learning how to fly. The first bee hops. The second bee slides. The third goes up, but then she dives. The fourth bee wiggles. She's almost there. The fifth bee's up. She's in the air. Five little bees in a hive. One, two, three, four, and five. I love math. I know you guys, I'm a little spaz spastic when I talk about the good and the beautiful, but do you see what I'm saying? How it, how it is the good and the beautiful. It is everything that, that their language arts is. It's everything that their history is. This it's everything. Um, okay. So then you read the poem a second time. Okay. Then you ask these questions. What does the first bee do? Okay. Cardinal number practice. So you take the flash cards um, and then you read the story and you'll, you'll do the numbers. Sorry, I'm getting my activity box. <laughs> Essentially, you will link numbers with the bees. So they know the fourth bee is four. So they're seeing four. They're seeing bees and, and number four. So beautifully done. Um, then the handwriting card. Then they do handwriting. So they're what is happening in this lesson is, you guys, I'm, I'm doing the lesson right now. I haven't even looked at this before. So they are doing, okay, they're doing, they're seeing. So visual, kinesthetic, right, kinesthetic learner, auditory learner, you're doing it, you're saying it to them, um, and it even gets like artistic kids, it gets you know, kids that see more in numbers, kids that see more in shapes, kids that see in stories. It's getting all of that. It's just helping them see math in a creative way in all different ways. Um, so then we go with the handwriting cards. I, I love this. You guys, I just talked about auditory. I didn't even read this. Look, it has a little plug for an auditory learner. I, I love this. Then there is a student worksheet. Let's go over to the student worksheet. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna color the number of bees according to the numeral shown. Okay, Drew knows how to do this, but again, I'm gonna have him do this because it's bringing life to math. Okay, so I'm just gonna flip through kind of so you can kind of see how the pattern is. See, daily dose and an activity where you can use your hands. Okay, these, so cute. Can I just go back in time and do this math? I think if I did math this way, I, it would, I would love it. Okay, this is so cute. All right, so let's skip over to, just gonna kinda on the road. Okay, we're just gonna zoom through here. There's a little maze. All right, these are cute. Okay, tally marks. I love that. This is something the other curriculums did not get. Tally marks, did not get tally marks. Here's some more tally marks. And another auditory learner tidbit to help you along the way. Roll and color. So you're gonna roll the dice um, and it's blending art into math. Love that. 
Okay, number line. I'm just going to hold it up here and kind of flip through so you guys can see, okay? Okay, my son would die over this. We'd probably be doing this every day. So they're going to have to know what fourth is and how to count and from which side. Love that. Um, patterns. It's getting patterns. Here we go. Drew is pretty good at patterns. You know, it's something that he is really good at. He could probably go through these immediately. Another worksheet you can give your child and they can cut and paste while you're working with the other ones. Missing numbers. Okay. Comparisons. Help the child count, compare. All right, let's go through this numbers coloring in the numbers this is something that Matthew C really did a lot which was great Matthew C worked a lot on just these number stacks and number those manipulatives that looked exactly like this but you know that is pretty much where it was that's all so you, with this you're going to get so many different learning styles um, and it's not going to get boring that's the key, you guys. It's not going to get boring. It's going to get exciting. Here's another roll. See, Drew, you guys, Drew can do these. I could give this to him and he could do that. Um, but again, I, I feel such a strong prompting to use this um, to create that love of math, that really strong foundation um, patterns. Just the, the confidence in math, just knowing he's not confident yet, you know, and I, yeah, ladybug spots, so cute. This is just going to open up so many avenues for him in viewing math, not just, just viewing math one way, but seeing it as a a beautiful that is so cute oh look at this let's just read this you guys you can hang out with me for a bit five kids against zero kids wouldn't make for a very fun game of tug of war then Enoch decided he wanted to be on a team of his own it was four against one Enoch pulled and pulled with all of his strength but unfortunately he wasn't quite strong enough to win all by himself Okay, not only is this showing numbers, but it's showing kind of a weight system, <laughs> you know? Four kids is stronger than one. Okay, I haven't even read the whole story yet, but I can see where I would take this. So in the kindergarten math, you're going to get story problems, okay? And it tells you exactly what to say. <sighs> story problems, you're not going to get that in somewhere else. At least not as good. <laughs> Oh, this looks like too cute. Okay, adding on. Um, number writing. I love that. So this is this is money. And again, we didn't he didn't grasp money so well. So that's something that we're gonna need to to really dive into. I'm glad that's there. Let's look at this. This looks fun. School supply shopping? Oh my gosh, I love this. If your child is you know, finish kindergarten and you don't feel like they really like, like you feel like I feel. <laughs> I'm telling you, this has everything. Let's, we're going to go to book two now because I know a lot of you want to see part two. Okay. On to part two. Um, let's just dive in. Okay. Level K part two. You're gonna work more on subtracting, um, working on the dime, and counting by tens. Counting by twos and tens and odds and evens, telling time to the hour, um, fractions, one half, um, inches, measurements. It's going to tell you the materials that you need um, oh, I love that. A small dollar action figure. Okay, sold. Action figure, we're doing it. 
in the second book if you just wanted to start with book two which I thought I was going to but after seeing book one we are starting there to really get his foundation strong it still has the calendar write the date the place value um, count to 61 also it has things like this show me your right hand attracting two from the groups of onions here we go more subtraction okay then we have a student worksheet and there's manipulatives that you can use here let me find them they have these garden manipulatives and if if your child is a doer a kinesthetic learner which most boys are um, these are really great where they can play with them touch them move them around please go perfect with this little section it's kind of like the bees um now let's go down to this bonus activity junior engineering so it has a fun engineering section oh, so cool number line subtraction count okay so here's the daily dose the calendar you do all of that every day count out a number line from the appendix of this course let's find that you guys a number line drew did not learn the number line so that's going to be really great um i i just saw this and how cool is this mountains and valleys while you're doing math you're learning about mountains and valleys That's what I'm talking about, the good and the beautiful. It just blends so well everything. It brings it together in this beautiful way. So this is the appendix with things that you will need going along with the lessons. Okay, so let's go back to, so here's lesson 67. It's a review. Um, reading numbers. You know, Drew has actually learned a lot of reading his numbers and guess where he learned that the good and the beautiful handwriting level two that he did from January on he was writing out the numbers so I would suggest if you get this math to get the handwriting the good and the beautiful handwriting it really goes along well with this okay so here's another like activity you can do to get off of your chair Hey, I love these assessments. This is something else I just love about the Good and the Beautiful curriculum. In all of their curriculums, their language arts and, and apparently in their math. They have assessments and it's just so nice to be able to track and it's so rewarding as a parent to, when you think you don't know if he's learning, you don't know if it's working, you do these assessments and it just is... It's, it fills you with such peace because they are learning written assessment. Okay, so you're going to give them these and they're going to do this assessment. So this is in book two, just to, just to show you that if your child is way above this, then maybe this curriculum is not for you. If your child is kind of like Drew, where Drew could answer some of these, he could. He knows the answers to these. He could do this, um, but again, he's not, he's not very confident at it. And he, another story. Ah, oh, so beautiful. All right, this is where this comes in, you guys. Going to the grocery store, so it's giving you real life situations. Sorting shapes, 2D and 3D. Amazing. But they learned that cube and sphere wow i'm just gonna kind of go through here now let me flip back these block towers i'm guessing these these i haven't dove, dove in quite yet but you build it with these which is going to give you a really good sense of the 3d shapes Okay, we're skipping forward a little bit. Let's skip. Here's some 3D shapes. Shape hunt. Shapes in art. Okay, this is another thing I love about this curriculum. Is you look at art and you find shapes within the art. I love that. 
again, it makes it kind of life. It's so beautiful. There's more shapes in art. Is that Mount Hood? I think it is. Oh my gosh. You guys, this is Mount Hood. This is where we live. Um, let's see. Just say hi, Mackenzie. <laughs> she was playing piano the whole time. I, I am doing a flip through for everyone, Mackenzie. Okay, so I don't know if you guys are bored. Whoever's watching this, if you're bored yet, you can always fast forward, but I love thorough flip throughs. Um, painting totem poles. That's so cute. Okay, money. This is something Drew really needs to, to do. Oh, yes. More cars. <laughs> All right, moving. So it comes with two picks. Of course, you could just get your own if you didn't want the activity box, but I love how they're just there. And I just go, oh, I needed two picks. Here they are. And then it says to make designs to follow the steps. So that's another cute hands on activity. Oh, this is so cute. Ladder subtraction. Delivering packages, oh, so cute. So you probably cut those out and put them in there. Oh, exploring measurement. Oh, where's my inchworm? Here's my inchworm manipulatives. Um, so another cute little story. Okay, so one, two, so you measure how long, how many inchworms it takes. That's really cute. Love that. More cut in half. So now we are learning fractions. That is awesome. Um, cut in half. Oh, more inchworm measurements. Where's my inchworms? More inchworms right there. So they're learning measurements. Time again. Where are we? Less than 113. What is an inch? Okay. It's teaching you little inches. Here's more. What is an inch? Here we go. Um, adding five showdown games. So a game. Measuring art. I love how they put art in there. It says measure the height of each ice cream cone with the inchworm manipulatives. Okay, then you measure it and then you match how many inches it is. Oh, so cute. So Mackenzie, oh look, circle the nest that has more. So Mackenzie, if you had this math, are you jealous? Yes. Did you want this math? It's so cute. Was adorable. your kindergarten math this cute? No, it was boring. All right, so this is how I'm going to put it away. I get his course book, his place chart value, and his calendar. And I'm still using these little folders from Lakeshore Learning. And I'm going to pop it in there. And that is going to be his math. And we are planning to do it every day, uh, about four days a week. I can't even do this one-handed, but you guys get the idea. Anyway, I will be sure to come back on and take a um, do a lesson with us with using this map, and you can kind of see how he responds, and I will be sure to update you on how it is going. So you guys have a good day, and um, yeah, hope that helped.